Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome to an all new issue of the Spinner Rack, issue 11. It's the start of a Superman spectacular. As always, I'm Big B with my co host, Junior. So this week for our Superman Spectacular, we got some special guests. Introduce yourself, gentlemen. David Sanchez, co-host of Comic Streamings. I'm Kerry the Camera Guy. I Carrie think that's just so guy. awesome. Kerry the Camera Guy? Kerry the Camera Guy. It works. It works. I like it. Oh, I got int- I thought... Okay. No, you totally... You're good, man. I'm good. I you're say. good. You're all, all right. good. Issue 11, we're going to discuss the Superman movies. Yeah. Leading up to Man of Steel, which is two weeks now. Two weeks. About two, two weeks. three weeks. Yeah. So I guess we'll start off with the uh, Downer movie. Absolutely. The original yeah. Superman. Of course. Yes. Remember first. lining up in front of the theaters to see him. So good stuff. Damn, he's, he's got to be older than me. That's a first. Mm-hmm. Got someone older than me here. I feel pretty good right now. How old are you, Carrie? Forty-four. Brian, how old are you? Damn, this guy about like what thirty-seven. Yeah. So yeah. saw, saw the stuff first. Years, it's awesome. I was like, you know, running around in my uh, Superman underoos and shit when that movie. Well, well that, that that's a visual. <laughs> Thanks. Thank hey, you. I was a lot smaller <laughs> and skinny. I didn't fatten up till I think third or fourth grade. That's but about I, the time we all did, I think. Well, not you. <laughs> Yeah, did you get fat? Does this guy ever get fat as a child? I, I, I started so. out and then shrunk on the way. So nice. it worked out. So anyway, back to that Superman <laughs> Donner film. It was the quintessential Superman movie, in my opinion. Doesn't really hold up today as good as it did 10, 15 years ago. I, I have to rewatch it. And like I said, after seeing Man of Steel, which we'll get into at some later point, uh, I really do need to go back and rewatch it. I, I love those movies. They, they, they just to me, they're still the quintessential Superman movie, the definitive Superman. They built a strong, a strong cult following too. I mean, uh, yeah, it kind of sucks that today you probably have to be like, well, for its time, it was like the best shit in the world, you know. Um, as far as action, I mean, obviously, it's not a great movie if you're gonna, if you're there to watch an action movie. No, it was like one of those romantic comedies. The the first two were basically romantic comedies, but um, even when when they were fighting the uh, Zod and the and the two bad guys, that was part one, right? Because then part Those two. two. Yeah, and that was two. That was two. I just jumped the movie. Part one was the one where like uh, they're in Niagara Falls, right? That's two. That's two. That's two. I really like part two. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, part one pretty much covers him as like a kid in Kansas, and then him uh, discovering the ship, the crystals, doing the Fortress of Solitude thing. Oh yeah, it's like a then teenager. Then the intro, yeah, intro, yeah, that intro, right. the intro. 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 Lex. First yeah. introduction of Lex Luthor. Yeah. The and greatest then, crit- criminal mind of our time. And what good casting there, huh, for Lex? Guy, gotta love. Oh my god, I almost called him Gene, Gene Hackman. Wilder. Gene Hackman. I was always Gene Wilder. I fucking had one of those senior moments. Gene Hackman. Dude, great Lex Luthor. I mean, if you complain, didn't have hair. He was wearing wigs. I think they showed that. I think they actually showed that in the first movie. Yes, they did. In when his he, little like, cave with yeah. Otis and Miss Tessmacher. Yeah, that's a Good classic stuff. buddy. But as far as action, you're right. That Minimal on the action in that movie. We're talking first Superman. Right? Superman, first 1. Superman, Returns. Superman 1. Superman 1. Okay. No, no. The, in the early ones, they were all like romantic comedy. Right, right, right. right, right. And that's why they, they probably banked a lot more, because they played off the fact that okay, we need women to come see this, too. <laughs> well, I think that had a lot to do with the producers, too. The producers didn't want to do too, too much of an action-heavy movie, which is why Donner left. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys know this, but Donner actually filmed two Yes. at the same time they were doing one, and then he left because of arguments with the producers about the direction. That's why two's got a lot more of the camp in it, a lot more of the humor, which if you picked up the Donner cut, to call that shit out. The, the part two that came out in theaters is the more campy one. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just to point that out. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and then the Donner cut was, you know, because I, I like the out. Donner cut. I'm a fan of the Donner. Cut. I, I thought the Donner cut was great, except for the fact that they reused. Yeah, she got me the Donner cut for Christmas. The yeah. ending from one. You're welcome, Junior. Right. You know, it's 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 kind of lame. And I mean, I understand that it's what 20, 30 years later when they put out the Donner cut. Yeah, that they had to make an ending because they didn't have one, and where he does the whole, you know, flying around the world, and which I thought was kind of stupid. I'm yeah. Superman. I'm going to spin the world backwards on its excess, and time's going to reverse. Once again, it goes back to you said right there. He's Superman. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. That says it all. There, he's well, Superman. I think that says too much because I love this character. But I love to hate him because they always give him stupid ass freaking but, but, powers. But you know that, what? That was that, that, that was that was makes the, sense. That was the uh, early the early days, though. I mean, even the yeah. Superman stories. And then when you got real talent writing those stories, you had some really really good stories. You know, I mean, where they toned down the powers, whatever. But at that time, they were playing on the you know I think the older the older books. You know, and even I mean that's like going back to Batman, Batman now, and then the Batman from the sixties. Two completely different. Well, in the older books, to his powers get so crazy that he had like shape shifting at right. one point. Uh, he could like autonomize, yeah, like just like. Once again, it, it, goes, it goes back by just saying he's Superman, and in the writing, that's 
I think that was the mindset. Yeah, middle, we, we, Superman we, red, Superman blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. But no, as, as far as the original, the first Superman movie, I always felt that was like the quintessential superhero origin story. They nailed all the beats, everything you needed to know. You know, the introduction of Ma and Pa Kent. You had Marlon Brando as uh, Jarrell. I mean, that's fucking Brando, man. It was awesome. Yeah. Not Great casting from right there. Man and Steel, but like that comes later. Yeah. <laughs> and then two, you know... I mean, I was a kid when I came, when it came out, so obviously I didn't have any issues with the camp. Um, non and his not working laser eyes and the super the shield at the end. Oh yeah, the, uh, the plastic wrap. Oh, right. I forgot yeah, the plastic wrap. Yeah. The saran wrap he threw at him. <laughs> yeah, the saran wrap <laughs> Superman yeah. S. Yeah. And then the creating like doubles of themselves as they're just teleporting around. You know, the fortress of solitude. Yeah, it got a little wacky. Got a little wacky. And then, you know, they get the Donner cut 20 years later, and they take all that shit out, and it's really all about Lois Lane trying to prove Clark Kent Superman, which I think was just a better movie. I mean, you got a little bit of that in the original cut, but the Donner cut, that's pretty much all it was about. Yeah. yeah. So uh, It creates a lot of confusion, though, in, in the, the later release of uh, the Superman Returns movie, which is based off of that mm-hmm. cut. It doesn't exist. There is, there is only the, the Donner cuts and the Donner movies, and after that, it's the new one. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you know, Superman 3. I mean, I'm gonna, we're going to hit all five of them here. And these uh, middle two. Superman 3, that was Richard Pryor? Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. That was a with Richard robot, Pryor movie. With the, with the yes. robot. The lead. Okay, I remember this one. The, yeah. the computer Why? guy and the android. I, I'm glad, Why did this I'm movie glad, happen again? I'm glad to say I've, I refuse to see them, and I still haven't seen them. I it, can't so. believe that. As a, as a hardcore Superman fan, but, but, you claim to be. But once again, I, I can't as, a, as a Superman that. fan, <laughs> I don't need to see that train wreck. As a Superman <laughs> fan, I think uh, I think Carrie made a good life choice. <laughs> 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 you can't unsee things. I, I agree, and as much of a train wreck as that movie was, it still did kind of give you the cool, like, the right kryptonite scene, where Clark Kent and Superman, oh, no, 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 like, There was split. nothing cool about that movie. You didn't like that <laughs> at all? About oh, I thought that was great. No, no, where, no. where Superman's getting drunk in the bar and he's just a dick, and then he <laughs> fights Clark Kent in the junkyard before they like remerge. I loved that. Wow, shit. this is the f- I missed this. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, there was, uh, they, wow. they split and then they. It's worth just out. watching. Just watch that. Yeah, like you could probably go on YouTube. Shadow. Yeah, Superman and Fox Black totally. Black. Wow, but like a total white beater. Wow, I'm totally. Not, and they darken up like the colors of the suit. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you mix. I mean, <laughs> otherwise, <that's, laughs> yeah, totally. Hit hit it up on YouTube. And fast fast forward to that part and then just. Watch the rest of it. Ah, that's why I didn't watch it. All right. Yeah. Bolo of shit. I don't know what they were doing there. And then Richard Pryor was pretty much Jar Jar Binks. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, that's yeah, a it's pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I, I like to call that the Richard Pryor Superman. It's not really Superman. It's more of a Richard Pryor movie. Yeah. Was um, he on fire? Was he doing coke in it? Because that might be what he was. He got drunk. <laughs> I was going to get drunk. I was like, all right, he was going to do it. He was going to say one, it. The one that surprises me, the one after that is the one that had the clone, right? Yeah, the quest for peace. That one really surprised me because that one could have been like a. A great Superboy movie. It almost felt like someone said, "Like, hey, we could bring Superboy in this, you know, do like some buddy cop thing." Because now they were going into that whole cheesy direction, and then they instead Lex Luthor creates like this weird uh, Solar Man as the clone, as opposed to like creating Superboy. He creates this weird Solar Man thing, which I could only assume was a licensing issue. That way, they don't have to pay for the name Superboy. Probably, instead, yeah. That, I could even seen that as going like a Bizarro route. It would have been a good introduction to Bizarro on the big screen, but you got this horrible nuclear man that the it's, guy that a, the guy that played the part couldn't even do his own voice. He was a blonde guy who was like some like some faded out rock and roll band. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, and he was voiced over by Gene Hackman. Yeah, that wow. Was, yeah, once again. And then you yeah. got John Cryer in there as like as Lex Luthor's nephew or something. It was again. Uh, it, it goes back to the producers. I can't remember this. And the, I missed this. Huh? I want to call Sorkins, but that's not their name. I don't. It was a shit fest. It was a shit fest. It almost sounds like that. <clears throat> and it, it, it's very close to Sorkins, yeah. but it's not. Uh, the, 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 I blame. Didn't the guy turn to producers. stone when he ran out of power? That Solar Man guy when he, he was like power, shuts he, down. Yeah, he shuts down. Like yeah, he like totally like kneels down. He did, yeah. He, Turns like a gargoyle. Yeah, totally. Because like, down to one of these. Because Superman like locks him in the elevator and fucking takes so him does, to So he does room. a Tebow. Uh, what is it? Uh, Tim Tebow? Uh, yeah, <laughs> not exactly. He, yeah, he pretty does, much. He takes, he takes <laughs> the it bow. Like, it was like the, team, the Tim Tebow of Tim Superman. Tim Tebow bow. <laughs> yeah. You know. Pretty much useless. Then they ship him off to the Jets. And, they, just, they just got him on board for ratings. You know, that was about it. I think that was the whole issue with those four original Superman movies. Once Donner left, that they... It was too much camp. It was too much comedy. It was too much towards kids. It became the 66 Batman series. F- yeah, that's a good comparison, man. Which really sucks, because like, after watching part two, especially uh, 
And you could talk any of the two, Richard Donner, because because there's that scene in there where Superman really gets his butt whooped. Well, mm-hmm. I think both versions have have that part where Superman gets really beaten up and he's like down and out, and he has to be the comeback kid. Like it, it was it was so epic. It's like to come out of that and make these two very campy movies. It's like really took you out of the franchise. It, it probably really just took you out of the whole vibe of the whole thing. I think that's one of the best scenes in Superman 2 after he gets depowered and him and Lois are in that truck stop and he gets his ass kicked by that trucker. Yeah. And it's, it's like a completely humanizing moment for Superman. I thought that was one of the best. Moments. Which I feel is what they try to do with <coughs> Returns. Oh, um, we're moving, we're, are we moving into Returns now? Oh, man, because... It's so just, to me, it's just, it's, no, 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 I, no, go ahead, Kerry. Uh, to me, to me retur- to Returns simply was a remake of the first one. You know, it was the same story with uh, Lex Luthor and Kryptonite, and going back to you know the real estate thing again. And you're like, Lex Luthor's not a real estate guy; he's the guy that backstabs you. And yeah. He doesn't get involved directly. And to to and what a waste of Kevin Spacey. I mean, he was great as Luthor in this this horrible script, and it was an atrocious piece of crap. It was, it was horrible. It was carry on this one because uh, the way I felt about that movie is is the way I felt about Joel Schumacher working on Batman. Where it was like the return to camp kind of thing with Batman. And that's how it felt with Superman. It was like, okay, I'm supposed to kind of like get this vibe that it continues from these first two Supermans, but at the same time, it's very repetitive of that. It retold the and same story. Yeah. It at did. the same time, though, you got to remember that Superman Returns is based off of the Richard Donner. Exactly. Uh, which technically was never released in theaters. Exactly. Yeah. It's not So you have a movie you're supposed to jump behind that follows a movie that technically does not exist. How confusing is that to the regular moviegoer? Unless you're a hardcore, you wouldn't know what the hell someone was talking about. Right. It is what it is. It I mean, was a piece of crap. Yeah. Like I, Singer should have went and made X Men Three. Yeah. If someone else should have done Superman movie, even though I don't. At, at this point, it's a movie. Yeah. Point. You guys want to get me angry? You guys want to talk about uh, X Men Three? No. <laughs> hey, hey, we got time. Discussion. We got. We got time. <laughs> You know, uh, it's sad when the best parts of the movie are shown in the trailer. You know, it's the airplane. Unfortunately, there's a lot of that going around, though. There is. But that would be the airplane scene in the Superman Returns, yes. as well as the bullet to the eye. Well, well, that, that, was, that was silly. Hey, <laughs> Iron, Man, Iron Man 3, the best scenes were the... Were the when you want to talk about the plane? I was going to say, you want to talk about getting angry? I like destroyed his house. You want to talk about getting angry? We won't discuss Iron Man 3. <laughs> no, it's a Superman That's why I'm really glad he didn't see those uh, other two Superman movies. We weren't really even angry. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's been some... Yeah, you can your shirt off right now. Absolute nerd rage, dude. Yeah, you want to burn that shirt. They were atrocious films. Yeah. All right, people, I have to sign off, get on my train. Come on, on the train. And ride it. <laughs> thank you for listening to me complain on the spinner rack. Brian, thank you very much for having me. Junior, pleasure as always. Always. Pleasure. Carrie. See ya. So now that Mr. Sanchez has departed, we can continue our discussion on Superman. And since we pretty much covered one through four, Junior doesn't have much to say about any of those. And It's been, to be honest, man, it's been too so long, long since I've watched like I said, from, from what I understand, I'm fortunate I haven't seen them. So no, you, You're very fortunate. They're, they're very and bad. you guys are going on, and I'm just like, I remember nothing of what you guys are saying. Some of, most of it. You do it's remember just, uh, John Cryer as Lex Luthor's nephew, though, right? He's like, yeah, man, it's great. Dude, you're so fucking... He made... <laughs> Sanchez made a great... You made a fucking... A great life choice not fucking seeing those movies really. <laughs> they were fucking terrible. But, uh... I want to get back to Superman Returns and what you were saying about how it's pretty much essentially just Superman 1. The whole land grab thing. I mean, it really is. It, I, it, I, it is a complete remake of the first one. <laughs> like, nowhere near as good. And like I said, it, it was such a shame to see Kevin Spacey wasted in that role because he nailed Luther. I mean, he really was good. He was vicious. Uh, but once again, it was a remake of the first movie. It just, that is good. And, and like I said, I, I honestly would love to see him come back as, as a Lex Luthor character. It's just, I thought he was a good... I didn't think he was... Luthor was... Uh, I liked this Luthor. I was about to be like, I didn't think it was good. No, but it wasn't bad. I didn't think the movie was fucking bad. Oh, the movie was terrible. I actually... That was one of the... I've seen every Superman movie in theaters. That one was fucking horrible. And because of who was attached to it, I expected so much more. You got Kevin Spacey, Spacey as Lex Luthor. Kevin Spacey's awesome, dude. Like, uh, Usual Suspects. I mean, I, the list could go on of great movies Kevin Spacey's been. That's not what we're talking about, though. Uh, Brandon Routh as Superman. I mean, to be a virtual unknown, the guy totally nailed all the man- mannerisms of uh, Christopher Reeve. Mm-hmm. He Really great performance, dude. Like, his, the slouching the shoulders when he was Clark Kent, and then 
being powerful. I mean, he, he nailed the character. I feel bad for the guy because it was just a shitty movie. It wasn't really his fault. I think there was a total miscast on Lois Lane, too. Oh, but what, what, what's again? I mean, it just... It, it was a bad movie. It was bad. I mean, the kid, the minute you throw the kid into the mix, I, it, it just... Yeah, that was terrible. Uh, Superman what, having a yeah. kid, come on. All right, I'm just going to wail in on here. I'm just going, I'm going hard, man. Go for it. The kid fucking was stupid. <laughs> Lois Lane was fucking horrible. She was ugly. She had no body. She was a twig. Superman was all, you know, oh, Superman, I come back from my long journey, and now I'm here. And Shut up! <laughs> and I agree with you guys, especially when you said, uh, you know, Kevin Spacey, what a waste of a role. You know, I'm sorry. The effects, of course, the effects were great. And like I told you guys earlier, the best two parts of that movie was the airplane scene and the bullet to the eye. And it was screwed up because both of those things were in the trailer. And when the trailer is better than the movie, that's sad. And what's sad is the way we reported it, uh, the numbers from earlier when we were doing Comics Remix. Yeah, what, what, once again, that's... The that's huge that's... budget and the crappy opening weekend. Yeah, what did you say? It was 270? $270 million and budget. 53? Yeah. Just about 53, 53. That's something. pathetic. Yeah. I blame that on that Bosworth girl's enormous fucking forehead. Like, okay, not that any movie-wise, Lois Lane has not been sexy. She just hasn't. See, the sexiest Lois Lane ever was in The Adventures of Lois and Clark. It was Carrie... Or, Carrie... Where the fuck am I going? <laughs> Carrie Fisher, I'm sorry. Um, somebody help me out. It's at the tip of my tongue. I forget her name. Son of a bitch. It's, it's, it's Terry Hatcher. Terry Hatcher. I was thinking about this on the drive over here. Oh, she was sexy. That if we got into this discussion, I thought, are we going to have enough material for a half an hour on Superman movies? Yeah. Because most of them sucked. When it comes to shows, dude, that show was great, man. Was. Uh, Dean Cain was a good Superman, and Terry Hatcher was just fucking hot, man. Yeah, she was. She's hot. She really was. I can't stop saying it. Yeah, hey, man. She's you know hot. what? I might even have to take that back. Sexiest Lois Lane, Lois Lane maybe besides her. It's a t- toss-up, in my opinion. Terry Hatcher. The one Eric, Erica Durant, yes. Yeah. The Smallville. There we go. She was hot. But there were times... Where she smiled and you could see her age coming through. I was like, oh. Yeah, but that, come on. Superman now was supposed to be high school and he looked like he was in his late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. So, I mean, they kind of threw that one out the window, anyways. I didn't really watch that show. Smallville? No. Nope. Dude, that's so. If you watch it from the beginning, it has its moments. Yeah. But, I mean, I, it was, I couldn't stop watching it, though. I never watched it on TV. I waited. I'm a DVD guy. If there's a show I want to watch, I'll wait for the DVD to be released and I'll watch the whole thing there. And that's how I watch Smallville. I watch it, wait for the season to be up, wait for it to drop on DVD, pick it up, and spend an entire weekend watching the whole thing. It has its moments. Once again, they tried for the essence of it. They they made some tweaks. It was okay. And, you know, for a TV show, it was what it was. Um, not a huge fan, but once again, it has its moments. I, I think it had heart. I think they... Oh, it had they, a lot of heart. Yeah, they tried, they tried to... They, Tried to accomplish what they set out to accomplish. Um, and once again, it felt Superman, even though some of it was kind of silly and mm-hmm. you had limited effects and, you know, they didn't do a lot of the costumes and that kind of stuff. Um, I, I thought it was a throwaway that they blame, like, every villain's power on the Kryptonite Well, but that, well, once again... The they, meteor rocks. Well, that's like everything happening in Smallville. Come on. Yeah. But once again, they needed a base. They needed a weekly Well, everything villain. happened in Smallville because right. that's where the so meteor that, right. that show never moved out of Smallville? Uh, not really till the very end. Yeah. But the guy, the guy who I mean, plays, a lot of Metropolis I forgot the actor who plays Lex Luthor in that. Michael Rosenbaum. Yeah. Amazing. Just and he will be nails, nails that. Michael Rosenbaum is awesome. Completely yeah. nails Lex Luthor. Loved his flash. That was the reason to watch. To, to watch. Yeah, him and Lana Lang until Erica Durant came along. <laughs> and I was just like, Lana who? What about Supergirl? No love for Supergirl? Oh, nah, I, I liked her. Hot, no? Oh, I did. Laura Which, Vanderhoof? Yeah, who? Thumbs up. I don't think she, she's Thumbs cute. Up. I like Tron V. It's something about her yes, face. Yes, but that's... <laughs> absolutely. V it's was a good show, unfortunately. Just, no? It's like her That eyes, little pixie look. Like this whole part right If you can only see what Junior is doing right now. We, we can't even like, describe it. Like, <laughs> he's trying to squish his own <laughs> face. He almost looks like he's trying to do an impression of that picture of the old man with that has no teeth that squishes his face oh, that, up. That, yeah, that, that almost, it's yeah. almost it. You know, I, it, it's so. Let me let me pull back to Returns so for a second. Did you guys actually see Returns in the theater? In the theaters, I saw it twice, and I fell asleep both times. I, I, you know, once again, walked out going, "What the hell was that?" It just 
I, I remember, though, I did ask for the two-disc special edition on DVD for Christmas because I knew I wasn't going to buy it for myself. But being that it's Superman, I had to own it. So I asked for it as a Christmas gift. Yeah, someone bought me that for Christmas. I gave it to my nephew. I didn't want it in my collection. <laughs> no, thanks. I don't have it on Blu-ray yet. I had high, high expectations for that movie. Brian Singer. Everybody had high expectations. You know, Dude, what about the guy who played Lois's husband, Cyclops, in the X-Men movie? Yeah, right. His career went down to shitter after that. Totally. Let me leave a successful franchise to go through Superman, not knowing how bad Superman is going to suck. Well, they you killed, went from being killed I, off. I, 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 unfortunately, though, they killed two franchises with that movie. Right. They killed Superman and the X-Men. Yeah. <coughs> because you know, what's the going to go bad in movies? Uh, yeah, it yeah. It, uh, it makes me wonder what had, what if Brian Singer had stayed to do X Men Three? Would it have been good? Would we have not gotten? What, well, what we got? Well, they said <laughs> the beginning sequence, the one where they're in a danger room. Yeah. They said, no, they said that was Brian Singer. That was his influence in the movie. Other than that, I don't know. It, it makes me wonder, like, uh, would you have got the bitch? I'm the juggernaut bitch line. If Brian Singer would actually do the movie, probably not. Did he need that? Would he have looked like the juggernaut if yeah. he was in the movie? Yeah. <laughs> if Brian Singer's directing the movie, like it's a guy in a penis then, helmet. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't. X Men Three was okay. I can watch it over and over before I watch Superman Returns. I will say that. Yeah. Well, the action's better. Once yeah. again, that's another life and choice. I saw it once. Yeah. It's yeah. out of my system. One of my other Hollywood wives is in that movie. Funky Johnson. Rebecca Romain? Nope. Halle Berry? Nope. Boop. Okay. Uh, Diana Ramirez. She played Callisto. The chick was on Heroes. Yes, she was. And she's on this new show now where, along with Rosalind, Rosalind Sanchez and some other chicks where they're like Latin housemaids. Like, they're like all into the mix of what's going on. It's all like murder, betrayal, and sex. So it's like, like Telemundo. It sounds, yeah, it it sounds like desperate, <laughs> desperate Housewives, but with Latin. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's Telemundo, the American style. But yeah, they're hot, so I'll watch it. You Dude, know, I am no shame in what I watch, man. It happens. I watched the first season of Dawson's Creek when it first came out, and so Pacey started banging his teacher, and I was like, eh. That's why I saw Barbed Wire, you know, because I thought Pamela Anderson was hot at the time, and then, you know, 20 minutes later, I left. Yeah. I don't walk out of movies, either. I mean, I it takes a lot. Beat this. I own every season, and I cried at the end. Of the OC. Once again, another life choice. Never saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I guess I'm doing okay. See, that's what happens when you get Junior in front of this mic. He starts revealing shit about himself that you would never get. I, I feel like I feel I feel like I should have a tin can, five cents. The doctor's in <laughs> yeah. a, a towel to cry. You know. <laughs> it was a good show, man. It was comic oriented, kind of. Right on. One of the main yeah, characters yeah, was you know. a big comic guy. Okay. You open the comic store. We're, we're not judging. It's no, totally. Place. Yeah, totally. It's your Who the you're fuck a... if you judge me or not? <laughs> <laughs> you're among friends, you They judge okay. me, I gotta burn my DVD. It's like, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. alright. <laughs> That's right, I cried for the season series finale of the OC. So, do you guys feel, final, final thoughts here, do you guys feel that with the epic failure of the last three Superman movies, that expectations for Man of Steel have set the bar low? Oh, yeah. I, I think I think I think in general Warner Brothers, with with their record of Superman, with the exception of the Dark Knight, because you know, I think a lot of their stuff is set the bar low. I mean, if someone said tomorrow, you know, we're putting out a Wonder Woman movie, would anyone honestly be thinking this is going to be the greatest thing? They'd be like, I've okay. Grown. Well, you'd be like, okay, let's see what happens. Or yeah, any, any, you know, Justice League. Is anybody honestly excited about Justice no. League? I would like to see them do well, but I'm not. Hyped for you it. know what? If they don't take the fucking Marvel approach, then they're not gonna. Yeah, make no, it. it's they. They need to take the Marvel approach. I am excited to see a Justice League movie, just for my love of the Justice League. Not that you're I feel leave the theater getting arrested because you're you know it's you know it's going to be Attack of the Clones. So it's going to be. Yeah. I went and saw. This is a great story. I'm going to fucking end it with this. I went and saw Attack of the Clones at a uh, midnight showing. I'm sorry. Ass loads of people dressed up like Star Wars characters. Totally excited. Because I felt like this movie, man, George Lucas heard the fans, and he's going to make up for that atrocious piece of shit that was Phantom Menace. Because I walked out of Phantom Menace, and I turned to my cousin, and I said, dude, we just watched a two and a half hour commercial for fucking toys. Mm -hmm. It was a horrible fucking movie. It sucked. So I felt like I was going to get something. But you went out and bought some more toys. I did buy a couple. Yeah, I did. I did. (laughs) And and now I couldn't get rid of them for a fucking dollar. Attack of the Clones, dude. 
I almost had a fucking aneurysm. At the, like, I, I literally wanted to smack people, and I almost did. The movie sucked so bad. I'm walking out of the theater, and some fanboy about three feet in front of me turned to his friend and was like, dude, that was the greatest movie I have ever seen. And I no, couldn't I contain. Movie, I couldn't contain. <laughs> what the fuck are you fucking talking about? Dude, my friends had to hold me back and shit. <laughs> like, I became this impassioned, raged psychopath. Because guy. I was going to hit this fucking it's, guy. It's okay. That was my Iron Man moment. Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't understand the Iron Man 3 hate. I don't. Hey, bro. I bootlegged it, though. You I didn't go to the theater. Weapon, part two and a half. Uh, yeah, or, I, I, or I the, love... Or the, or the, or the, uh, the, the, the jerk-off uh, session between uh, Robert Downey Jr. and the director because of Bus Buddies going, Hey, you're great. Yeah. No, you're great. No, you're great. No, you're great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel for you. I get you it. You heard Downey signed on again, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. And, for, and Avengers for, for Avengers, and, and that's okay. I, I can live with that. Um, like I said, after once again we're divert, you know, deviating. But yeah, after that last one, and they said, "Well, we may not be back." I'm like, I don't care. Re- reboot. Reboot. No. If you're gonna do, a, if you're gonna do no an Iron Man series again with that, no reboot. I honestly thinking think that Soft rebooting reboot, is just yeah. Before. That's that's or the way to the go. Same thing. It's a few years later, and they've got a new human cast, and they're kind of starting again with with what's in the same universe. Like obviously, we're gonna get. A Batman reboot now. Unfortunately. Now, when they do that first Batman movie, don't fucking give me the build up. We know already. Yeah. Just get into it. Well, the question is too. If well, once again we're going away. If if they do a Batman build up, uh, which they've they've talked about, um, and I love the Dark Knight series. Now the question is, uh, DC's characters are a little more fantastic. You if you if you're going to start a little more whimsical. Well, no, but it, 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 <laughs> yes. Uh, but Marvel's stories were kind of grounded in reality. And when you start approaching, for example, a Superman, when you start putting them in reality, I think you're really limiting yourself. I think, uh, as much as I like the Dark Knight movies, I think they really had, they limited themselves because they kept it in reality, and his villains have always been these fantastic characters. So when you reboot, do you keep reality-based, or do you go into a fantasy setting like Tim Burton's where you could introduce whoever you want because it's already a fantasy? I think you go balls to the wall, dude. I think you let it all hang out. I think you say, fuck the traditional Hollywood fucking concepts of what these movies have to be, and you let them be what they are. And then I think you'll you'll open a whole fucking spectrum of greatness that we've never fucking seen before. I don't want to see fucking Batman in the gray and black, dude, with the fucking big, huge, army-looking pouch fucking utility belt, dude, like we get, well, pre-New 52. You get a lot of fan pages, and you get a lot of... Uh up and coming movie directors who do stuff like this as their demos. Oh yeah, the uh, what is it, Dark Dark Alley or like, yeah, when he's fighting Predator, one of the best. Oh, man. Yeah, that's great. That, that Batman that is suit's Batman. fucking fantastic, man. This would uh, that would be issue eleven, our Superman movie special leading into next week's Man of Steel. Actually, it won't be next week because you know if you're listening to this, it's Monday. It will be getting Man of Steel on Friday because we care. And I'm a slacker and we missed two weeks. I'm sorry, but uh, I'd like to thank Corey for being here. Thanks for sitting in. Who the fuck is Corey? Did I just say Corey? You yeah. did, but that's fuck okay. My it's bad. Late. You're yeah. tired. It's one of those things. I, like, is that the guy sitting in that It's like that guy over there that used to be David Sanchez? That pig fucker. <laughs> <laughs> See, now he's not here anymore, so I'll, I'll be an asshole. No. I'm, Don't worry, you'll be getting a phone call. You call me sure. a pig fucker, man. Like, <laughs> Jack, I'm like, so? Don't put my business out there already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's, let's see what comicsremix.com. Oh, should I go into the plug? Yeah, go for the plugs, man. Plug away. Comics Remix. You can find us on Facebook at, comics, at facebook.com slash comics remix. Find us on Twitter at comics remix. You can email us at comics remix at gmail.com. You can, uh, obviously, if you're listening to this, you know you can go to the spinner rack dot podbean dot com. You can contact Brian or myself at the spinner rack at ymail.com, which I still think is a fake email. It's, it's Yahoo, man. It's Yahoo. Is it Yahoo? Okay. It's Yahoo. Oh. Whatever. <coughs> you know, I don't, I don't control up. Yahoo. Fuck, fuck Sanchez. It's it's real. <laughs> uh, no one emails us there, but it's real. <laughs> you can go pretty much to uh, go to the central hub of it all at comicsremix.com. We've got a lot of stuff coming up soon. Uh, you guys are going to get to know Carrie a little bit more. So get used to him. If you don't like him. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, change. Yeah. Change for the fans. Yeah. Whatever the fans want, man. Whatever yeah. the fans want. All right. That's all the plugs I got. Well, that's issue 11. Tune in next week for issue 12, the Man of Steel special. Joining us again will be... Carrie. 
The camera, camera guy. guy. CC for short. Right on. CC. As always, I'm Brian Adams, my co host. And I'm Junior. But before we go, I just want to read something really quick. Okay. It says, is, is it a, man, a Mimi, man, whatever the fuck it's called? I say Mimi's. I've told that they're fucking. A photo memes. with words on them to make a funny joke. Right. And it's just, it says, I hate when celebrities get on TV and tell us to donate to some, to some fun. Bitch, you make $12 million a movie. You send money. I just thought that was funny. I just wanted to share that. I know hey, I agree with that shit. You know, oh man, the new G.I. Joe action figures are out, yo. <sighs> <laughs> they are. Oh, good Christ. And with That's... that, we're gone. We're gone. Good night. Peace. Peace.